Tonight, a slippery slope. Explanation of import testing protocols raise further questions over carcinogenic coconut oil. The health authority give the recommendation based on the first sample, whereas CLSI, we waited the second sample to give the recommendations. A semblance of normalcy. Schools in and outside Colombo report impressive attendance of up to 80%. Propaganda resurgence. Two suspects running a pro LTTE website and YouTube channel in Jaffna, busted by the TID. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine, this Monday, the 29th of March, 2021. Alcohol adango hand sanitizer bavita karane. Lady Roga atikarana bishop ejavalata erehiva satan karane. Hantun vadi me mila rupial tun sepan hai. From Ada Verana. This is Ada Verena First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanai. Now, the Sri Lanka Standards Institution says that a second round of tests have confirmed that the unrefined coconut oil imported by three companies contain a high percentage of a deadly carcinogenic substance called aflatoxins. The Director General of Customs stated that the reports have been forwarded to the Sri Lanka Customs and accordingly the companies have been informed to re-export the containers. The Sri Lanka Customs has commenced an investigation to determine whether there has been any oil removed from the said containers. The Food Safety Unit of the Ministry of Health confirmed on the 4th of March that a stock of unrefined coconut oil imported into the country by three companies contained a high percentage of a strong carcinogen called aflatoxin. When the issue was first exposed, the representatives of the country's traditional coconut oil manufacturers association, as well as some political representatives, alleged that the 13 containers were cleared and released from customs. However, the customs department explained that the containers had only been released for storage at the importer's warehouses while awaiting quality inspection reports. Against this backdrop, the Sri Lanka Standards Institution took action to test the coconut oil samples for the second time in response to appeals made by the companies in question. The samples were taken from unrefined oil stocks stored in the company warehouses. Following this, the Sri Lanka Standards Institution announced that for the second time, the unrefined oil imported by Ali Brothers Private Limited, Edirisinga Edible Oils and Katana Refineries have been found to contain high levels of the carcinogenic substance. Although the maximum accepted aflatoxin level per kilogram of coconut oil is 10 micrograms, the samples taken from the consignments belonging to the three companies were found to contain almost three times that amount. Accordingly, the Standards Institution stated that the reports have been forwarded to the Director General of Customs for further action regarding the containers. Meanwhile, Director General of the Sri Lanka Standards Institution, Dr. Siddhika Sena Ratna, outlined the differences between the testing protocols followed by the SLSI and the Ministry of Health's Food Safety Unit. Dr. Sena Ratna stated that the Health Ministry's Food Safety Unit gives its recommendations after a single test, whereas the SLSI offers the choice of a second test for an importer if the sample fails the first test. So when we get the notification online, first of all we check for documents, whether they are correct or not. And if everything is okay, we liaise with the customs and then with the importer. And then we go and collect the first sample from the port or from RCT. So SLSI have a 24-hour operating branch in RCT. So when our sample officers go and collect samples and then they, we bring that to our sample room at SLSI. So from sample room, we give a code to that. No names or nothing goes to the lab. So with that code, we send uh, samples to the lab. So once the lab finish testing, the test report comes back to Quality Assurance Division and they decode the name and then if they are passed the first time we give a recommendation to customs to be released to the consumers we only give a recommendation we can't a 
pro anything and if the sample is failed we tell the importer your sample is failed what do you want to do whether you want to re-export or you want to do a second sample so if they say they want to resample we go and collect the second sample and only once the test report comes we inform the customs we give a recommendation if it is failed we say to re-export if, if it is passed we said you can release to the consumer but the thing is uh, there is a difference between um, the way we do it and the way Ministry of Health does it. Minister of Health, they only do random samples. They don't check each and every consignment. Whereas SLSI for 48 food items that has been regulated by the import-export controller. And through that, we have to check each and every consignment. We can't skip. The health authority give the recommendation based on the first sample. Whereas SLSI, we wait till the second sample to give the recommendations. Now from the hill, they appeal for the second sampling, whereas with us, they just ask because, you know, WTO regulations, we had to adhere. So because of that only, we had to do the way we do it. Meanwhile, in response to questions regarding the likelihood of multiple test samples of the same consignment returning different results, Dr. Senaratta stated that a single sample cannot necessarily represent the entire consignment and hence results can actually vary. With that being said, however, could this mean that the accuracy of negative first test results are also likely to be inaccurate, posing the risk of aflatoxin laced coconut oil being released for public consumption? Now, students of all grades in the Western Province schools return to academic activities today. Only three selected grades at Western Province schools return to school on the 15th of this month. Things look to be returning to normalcy, with attendance today being in the region of 80%. The schools in the Western Province reopened for all the grades this morning with strict adherence to health and safety protocols. The decision to reopen schools was made by the Ministry of Education with the approval of Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asil Gunavardhana. All grades in the Western Province schools were scheduled to resume academic activities on the 19th of next month. But that date was brought forward, taking the country's prevailing COVID-19 situation into account. Guidelines were issued by the Ministry of Education last Thursday on how maximum capacity of classrooms and how the processes should be implemented in adherence to health and safety guidelines. Several teachers from schools on the outskirts of Colombo that we spoke to said that the student attendance today was high and overall the resumption of academic activities in their respective schools were very positive. Director of Education in the Western Province P. Srilal Nonis too gave a positive feedback on today's student and teacher attendance. Meanwhile, the government continues to assure the safety in reopening schools to all grades in the Western Province. Minister of Education Professor G. L. Piris said at a media briefing that parents must not harbour any fears over sending their children to school. Sauke Adyaksha General Tumage Upadis Paridi, Prida Katiutu, Sanskritika Katiutu, Tarangavani Deval, Eka Vitama, Aramakarane, Eva Aramakarana Balapurutuane, Aurudin Passe. He takes it back at the Karaganepa, Panti Patrima, Vibaga, Nisipari, the Pathwaganema, Miss Yelakma, Tama, Vidimat, Kerelakano, Emisa, Darwa, Passel at Evana. Meanwhile, Chief Epidemiologist of the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samaravera says that the students should constantly adhere to the safety protocols within schools. For the president of the Public Health Inspectors Union, Upul Rohana also gave a positive observation on the behaviour of students within schools. However, he was not happy with the public and school transportations. Pasalata Daruan Pamini Midvishan Pravahane Sambanda Barapatala Gatalutibuna Kanagatu Dakatya Kapini Rikchana Vishan Pasal Basrata Saha Podu Pravahana Seva Daruan Bavita Karan Akare Pilbanda Gatlutibuna. Namut Pasala Tulata Daruan Pamuna Pasi Pasala Tula Daruan Surakti Hatsirena Kiana Kapita Pahadilu Penatiana. Now with the single and Tamil New Year just around the corner, seasonal shopping is expected to attract large crowds of people, thus increasing the risk of another COVID-19 cluster. As such, Chief Epidemiologist at the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat Samarvira, urges people to keep the festive shopping to a minimum, especially with more people moving about in society at the moment, owing to schools being reopened. 
Once again, Sri Lanka's daily COVID-19 caseload was reported below 300 yesterday as the infections totaled 249. Topping yesterday's list, however, was Jaffna, confirming 63 cases. The Colombo and Gampa districts, meanwhile, recorded 42 and 33 novel coronavirus infections, respectively. 14 COVID-19 infections each were recorded from Badulla and Hambantota, and a further 71 cases were recorded from 17 other districts. Yesterday's infections also include 12 Sri Lankan returnees. As for today, 166 new COVID-19 infections have been confirmed so far. I was told COVID-19 was a COVID shield in the COVID-19 was a COVID-19 in the COVID-19 was a COVID-19 in the COVID-19 was a COVID-19 was a COVID-19 in the COVID-19 was a COVID-19 in the 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 COVID-19 අපි හඳුනා නොගත්තු රෝගියෙක් නිසා තවත් රෝගී පොකුරක් ඇති වෙන්න පුළුවන්. ඒකට හොඳම උදාහරණය තමයි යාපනයේ දිස්ත්‍රික්කයේ තුල රෝගින් 250කට ආසන්න ප්‍රමාණය තින්නවේලි වෙළඳපොළේ ඒ වගේම නගරයේ තියෙන ප්‍රධාන වෙළඳපොළ ආශ්‍රිතවත් අපි හඳුනා ගත්තා. ඒ නිසා අපි හැම අවස්ථාවකම සමාජයට පැමිණීමේදී ඊටමත්ම ආරක්ෂා කරීමේ ඊටමත්ම වැදගත් වෙනවා. විශේෂයෙන්ම මේ උත්සව සමයේ අපිට දකින්න පුළුවන් විශාල ජනතාවක් වෙළඳපොළ වල් වලට ඇදෙනවා. ඒ වගේම අද දවස තුල අපේ රටේ සමස්ත පාසල් පද්ධතියම යතා තත්ත්වයට පත් වෙලා සියලුම ශිෂ්‍යයන්ගේ අධ්‍යාපන කටයුතු නැවතත් යතා තත්ත්වයට පත් වෙලා තියෙනවා ඔවුන් පාසල් පැමිණෙනවා ඒ නිසා විශාල පිරිසක් අපේ සමාජයට එකතු වෙනවා ඒ නිසා මේ අවස්ථාවේදී කොවිඩ් 19 රෝගය නැවත පුකුරු ඇති වීමත් වලක්වා ගැනීම සඳහා සියලු දෙනාගේම දායකත්වයේ ඊටමත්ම වැදගත් වෙනවා විශේෂයෙන්ම අලුත් අවුරුද්ද ඉලක්ක කර ගැනීමෙන් සාපු සවාරි යෑම සිදු වෙනවා ඒ ඊටමත්ම අවම කරගත යුතුයි මීන්වල් the country's COVID-19 death toll rose to 561 yesterday after two COVID-19 fatalities were confirmed. The deaths, however, had occurred on the 29th of December last year and on the 1st of February this year. In the meantime, after the complete recovery of 291 persons were confirmed today, the island's overall number of novel coronavirus recoveries rose to 88,914. This places the island's tally of active COVID-19 cases at 2,776. Japan's ambassador to Sri Lanka, Kira Sugiyama, says that Japan, as a long-standing development partner, is determined to work with Sri Lanka to turn the pandemic situation into an opportunity and to, pos and to make positive changes in all areas, including in the health and gender sectors. The Japanese envoy was speaking at an event in Colombo marking the handing over of essential equipment for the United Nations Family Planning Association headed project for the setting up of specialized centers to deal with gender-based violence and family planning across the country. As a long-time development partner, Japan has been supporting the peace and development of Sri Lanka in response to the genuine needs of the Sri Lanka people, including in the areas of gender and women's employment. Sri Lanka and Japan are partner countries under this WPS initiative, for which Japan has so far extended assistance in the amount of approximately 6 million US dollars to Sri Lanka through UN organizations. Japan's assistance to the UNPS Promises project is part of this initiative. In addition, Japan has been supporting Sri Lanka for the formulation of its national action plan on women, peace, and security. To help Sri Lanka's fight against the COVID-19, Japan has extended about 14.5 million US dollars, including for provision of medical equipment, improvement of hospitals, and reintegration of returned migrant workers. Amid the COVID-19 outbreak, we need to minimize the impact from the pandemic, of course, and build back a better society in which all people, including those affected by the conflict, can live with dignity. Japan is determined to continue to work with Sri Lanka to turn this crisis into an opportunity to make positive changes in every area, including health and gender sector. Now, the special committee appointed by the Archdiocese of Colombo to study the final report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry that probed these Sunday terror attacks has called for all suspects involved in the attack to be prosecuted after expediting investigations. Releasing a media communique today, the committee called for the demands to be implemented before the second anniversary of the attacks and warned 
that failures will result in island-wide protests. The Archdiocese of Colombo appointed a special committee to study the final report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry that probed the Easter Sunday terror attack and to take further action on justice. The committee, headed by Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, includes the three auxiliary bishops of the diocese and nine priests. Releasing a media communique today, the committee says that the efforts to seek justice on behalf of those affected by the attacks will continue uninterrupted until it succeeds. Further, the committee urges all concerned that they should look out for all those who are connected to this crime both directly and indirectly and bring them before the law without any delays after expediting the investigations. They also request to expedite the process of prosecution against the suspects currently under custody over their links to the Easter Sunday attack. The committee also highlighted the need of a thorough investigation on the people who had contacts with Zara and Hashim during the latter years of the North and East conflict. They added that it is important and necessary to prosecute political leaders and officials who have been seconded by the Easter attacks PCY report for failing to prevent the massacre. What's more, the committee calls to proscribe the extremist Islamic groups and their sponsors and support with immediate effect. Another request is to implement the demands before the second anniversary of the attacks this year. The committee also says that they wonder that whether there are any external interference that hampers the efficiency of these institutions in finding out who the real culprits are and prosecuting those who are responsible for the attacks. Further, they plan to go ahead with their island-wide protest if justice isn't forthcoming. The Terrorism Investigation Division has arrested two suspects from Jaffna for maintaining a website and a YouTube channel allegedly promoting LTTE terrorist propaganda. Police media spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohan has said that the TID had conducted a special raid pertaining to an office located at Navala Street in Jaffna this morning to trace the YouTube channel and the website in question. He added that the two outlets had been operated for months and that they promoted speeches of slain LTTE leader Velupile Prabhakaran and the symbols of the LTTE terrorist organization. A 35-year-old woman and the 36-year-old man who were running the said office had been arrested by the TID. In the meantime, a police constable attached to the Maharagama police has been interdicted for assaulting a civilian. A video showing a policeman brutally attacking a man in the middle of the road went viral on social media today. Subsequently, the police launched a probe into the incident. The police traced the location in the video and the incident had happened in the area of Panipitia. Police said that prior to the assault, the lorry that, that was driven by the man who was assaulted by the police officer had hit the traffic OIC of Maharagama police. The police constable who assaulted the lorry driver is also attached to the Maharagama police and was later interdicted. Now in other local news, opposition leader Sajid Premadasu says that the Sri Lanka Standards Institute and the Department of Customs failed to stop the entrance of cancer causing coconut oil imports into the country and keep the public safe. He made these comments while addressing the 65th leg of his mobile service in Beruala. The 65th leg of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa's mobile service was worked off today in the area of Beruala. Poltel Magadiing Ahimi Vena Deval Mudalin Takseru Karana Tabe Evaing Ahimi Vena Pita Minis Jeevit Pramiti Karana Ayatane Meta Adala Niladharinu Regue Meta Adala Niladharinu Rata when when penny city in the natua. We be the Samagam Mala Manghitana carret, Balapamal Yatatela, Pilika caraca, Poltel, Velan the Polatan, Nikutela, Hamarai, Samagi Jana Balavege, Api, Parisareta Multana de la Cati to Karno, Pamanak Noe, Merate, Janata Vege, Sauke Sampana Bahave, Shakti Makaranata, Api Anivari, Makati to Karno. We will see you shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, Sri Lankan shares ended higher today, helped by gains in industrial and financial stocks. The CSE All Share Price Index ended up 0.43% at 7,127.69, while the SNPSL 20 Index of More Liquid Stocks gained 17.48 points to close at 2,884.14. Now here's Dimantha Matthew with a brief report on today's market performance.
Today we saw a bit more buying interest in the market than the last few days uh, which converted the market into green territory. So the index ended at a 30 point high today, we're ending at uh, 7,127 points. So with this uh, 30 point gain, we saw more confidence levels uh, in the stock market today. So with that, uh, investor interest was more positive and more and more buying interest was emerging in the market. So with this uh, what we are starting to uh, see is that more institutional participation is taking place. Uh, if you take the overall transactions today, the turnover was at a, a three-week high of 2.1 billion rupees and the number of transactions if you take comparatively were quite onto the lower side ju with just 11,000 trades. That is because there was more institutional participation in the market today. In the meantime, the rupee closed flat at 199 and 25 to 75 cents against the US dollar today after closing at the same level on Friday. Now let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. And that's it from all of us here at First of Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.